I mean, here, here's the truth. Like, when you see me, you, you probably feel like you know me. Yeah. Because how much have you seen me talk I've about I've seen you. you. Yeah. Like, this is, you, Quite a bit. you probably feel like we've done this before. I feel like I'm in one of the videos that I used to watch at the beginning. Yeah, <laughs> but, you, but this is what I'm doing. Yeah. I'm going to leverage this. This is going to be a YouTube video for me. And I'm going to run ads to something similar to this. Not the whole thing, but like a piece of it where it gets people to want to know more. I'll give them value. They right. learn something. They go, wow, I just learned something there. I can implement that. That'll work for me. Like they get it. excited. And now they want to see other videos of mine. That familiarity, when we talk about the sales, that familiarity helps in sales. And I'll give you an example. I want you to imagine um, you went to a, a conference. Let's say it was like an industry conference for your world, okay? And so in this conference, you got two booths. <clears throat> and at these two booths, you got me and you got some other guy. Both of them do the same thing, right? Both of them say they do fitness marketing. This company, Loud Rumor, and this company, ABC Fitness. Now, I want you to pretend you're not a client of ours and we don't have this year-long or plus relationship, yeah. right? I want you to imagine you've seen the videos, you've watched the GSD show, you've seen my stuff, you've gotten value, you thought it was great, whatever it was, even if you, even if you just saw me a couple times, a couple times, two times, you're here, you just walked in, and you kind of have an interest in you know, seeing what you can do to make your business better. That's why you're here. Right. Which one do you walk up to first? The, one, the face that I recognize. Okay, so you walk up to here first, right? <clears throat> so already I got an edge. Simply because the familiarity, familiarity created interest and comfort. Got it. So now, how does this conversation start? What's the, what do you say to break the ice with me? Hey, I saw you in a video. Okay. Now, You're the guy with the Lamona's video. Okay. Right. Now, what do you say to this guy? How do you break the ice? Uh, hey, my name is Oscar. What do you do? Now, as a salesperson, <clears throat> which one do you want to hear? Hey, I've seen you before, or what do you do? I've seen you before. Okay, so as a salesperson, and you're behind one of these booths, where do you think you have the best chance to make sales? The one that, that you recognize, yeah. Okay, so for you, it's the same thing. Got it. Celebrity is really just I've seen you on a screen. That's it. That's all it is. And, and I don't have a ton of followers yet. I don't have a ton of, uh, but the thing is, I'm very specific. Right. So, you know, you take somebody like Gary Vee's got two point something million followers, but he's very broad, right? Entrepreneurs and people that want to hustle and work, even employees, right? People that just want to work hard and learn what it means to achieve something better, right? And use stuff like this. For me, it's fitness studios. Right. right? It's a lot less. So when I go to a, a conference, a related conference, I can't take 15, 20 steps without somebody going, hey, can we take a picture? Right, and that right there, you know how easy it is to make a sale in that case? Which is great, not just for, for him, and or for me, but it's great for him. Because, I don't know about you, but I feel like I deliver a great product. Right. I believe in my product, and I believe this would help him. The fact that I can get more people like him to say yes, and help more people like him, just because of that, everyone's winning. <clears throat> for you, it's so cheap to get attention. What, what would you say, what would you guess? I know the actual number. What would you guess my average cost per view is on a video that I put out there? Cost per view? Yep, on Facebook. Uh, to get somebody to watch a video of mine. A few cents? One cent. <laughs> One penny. You can have it too. Wow. So let's do the math so we can <clears throat> see how crazy that really is. One viewer. One targeted, by the way. Not, targeted viewer, not, not like a broad. My grandma random. in Canada. Okay. No, I don't have a grandma in Canada, but if I did, okay. not her. One viewer cost me one cent. So, one hundred viewers cost me how much? A buck. One dollar. One hundred targeted users. Let's always remember that. Yeah. One hundred them. Okay. What does one thousand viewers cost me? Ten dollars. Targeted. Users. What does 10,000 viewers cost me? 100 bucks. Okay, now I want you to answer this. What's the last purchase that you made that cost you $100 that was less valuable to your business than that? Yeah. Well, what, was it dinner? At the very least. 
sneakers. <laughs> yeah. Like, would you? I mean, yeah. it's hard not to spend a hundred bucks on anything. Like, so, you know, so now like, when you think about it, right? Because we don't think about yeah. it this way, and that's what's messed up. Like, perspective is the number one thing that'll help you grow, right? And so, I want you to imagine this. Imagine this was real, and you're sitting here, or here, whatever. And I say, hey, Oscar, I'm going to give you one of two things. Your choice. Your choice. I just need you to give me a hundred dollars in return. I'm going to give you this brand new set of sneakers, or I'm going to immediately have 10,000 targeted people in your area that fit your demographic watch your video with your face in it and know what your Pilates studio is. I will go with the 10,000. You, you can choose that. Yeah, yeah, that's not a choice. That's not, that's yeah. not a, that's yeah, not a the hypothetical. Are, the sneakers are not going to help me grow my business. Yeah, that's <laughs> not a hypothetical choice. That's a real choice you get every day. You see yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So the funny thing is we're acting like, oh, I would do this. No, you should do that. You can do that. And that's how simple it is, right? But people don't either know it or they don't, they don't like think about it in that perspective. And then when they do, they're realizing like, man, it, I, could, I could have probably not made $600 worth of dumb purchases on Amazon on stuff that's really not even being used anymore over the last 90 days. And that $600 would have given me 60,000 viewers. Now, how does that help? Again, in your sales process, when they do see your ad, because there's gonna be overlap, right? You're not targeting. I target a country. And when I go to a conference, people feel like they recognize me. Right. You're targeting five miles. I'm targeting zip codes, yeah. It's cr you, you should be, the, 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 the goal should be simple. If you or Sam, right, whoever and or Sam, either way, if you were to walk into a Whole Foods where you know your target audience is probably living, right? A Whole Foods, and there's, let's say there's a Whole Foods four miles away, and you're wearing your shirt, you guys should get stopped as much as you would stop me if you saw me at Whole Foods. Yes. Which, um, ever since we have been working with Lab Rumor and we're getting all these leads and, you know, like getting more exposure. We are finding ourselves that like cool, right? people will you know recognize us. That's cool. Now, now you're not even you're only running <clears throat> ads. Yeah. So think about this: when you run ads, you're paying more than one cent per view because of the the way it works. It's it's there's not like value there. There's just an offer, which you still do, right? You right. still run ads, but the difference is, I don't share ads as much as I share wow, I had no idea that, you know, um, honey actually had sugar and eating this much honey was as bad as, as yeah. like getting as much sugar as I, if I drank yeah, a can uh, of soda yeah. in that way, right? Or whatever it is. Or, you know, eating at night is actually okay as long as I didn't hit my calorie goal and, and you know, whatever you believe, right? Whatever right. it is. So something that makes me think, because think about, you know, when, you, when people go to a barbecue, and something like that comes up. I mean, how many times does nutrition come up at barbecues nowadays? Like, it's a normal conversation, right? Where people say, did you know that refined sugar is the leading cause of inflammation? I just learned it's like causing cancer and this and that. Or people will say something like, oh man, did you know Coke Zero, like the zero calorie, it's still like really bad for you because it's got this, this, this. And they like talking about it. Now, maybe not everyone, but your target audience does. Yeah. The people that you want to work out at your studio talk about that, right? Yeah. Because that's, All the time, yeah. for you, would you rather have the person that doesn't give a shit? Yeah. Coke, I don't care, I'll drink Coke every day. Yeah. Or do you, would you rather have that's the person- That's not someone that I will target. You know, of course, target of yeah. course. So for you, you can literally target people, women 25 to 55 that like organic food. Women 25 to 55 that like whole foods. You're gonna have less, less audience, but you can hit them over and over and over and over and over. Right. Right. And so now when you walk into this place, it it's even higher at a faster level because the ads that we run, you may get off of a $500 spend, you may get 50 shares, right? But off of a $500 spend in a branding where you're actually providing value, you may get 300 shares. And the great thing is that's what, that's what really brings that cost down because it's your, you, you don't pay for the organic. So I pay, you know that already, yeah, right? Yeah. You, pay, you pay for the ad that the targeted person but if that targeted person shares it, everyone else at the sought after that's right. free, which brings the overall average down. You see what I'm saying? And that's why these do so well, because the sharing allows that price to go down. There's more sharing. Then, on top of that, what you're doing is you're saying, okay, uh, let me get the eraser. You're creating this. This is basically what you're doing. 
So what you're saying is, okay, this is my ad. My booth at the conference is equivalent to my ad online, right? I'm going where the people are, right. online or at or this online. conference. And I'm going where the people are. And all you're doing is you're sending an invitation to the conference specifically to people that have watched your video. So when you run an ad, you can choose to run an ad only to people that have watched these videos. Got it. People, you could even say, I only want to show it to people that have watched 10 seconds or more. Because now you know they've at least seen your face, right. heard your voice. Now they'll recognize you. Now they, they definitely recognize you. And so <clears throat> now the ad has a higher conversion rate. See, this right, right here yeah. is level one. Too many people can't get past level one, and that holds them back. And, and what hurts is that they become dependent on Facebook ads. And you shouldn't be. See, the cool thing is when you build your brand in the community, it doesn't matter what the next thing is. The next thing, you could jump to it because Facebook is a tool that you're using to get people that already know you to keep liking and trusting you. But once they like and trust you, you take people like Gary Vee or Tony Robbins, it doesn't matter what's out now. They, they, Tony Robbins right now could jump on a whole new social platform and he'll just have people following him wherever he goes. Whatever the next thing he uses, he starts a podcast, people go to the podcast. You see what I mean? So now yeah. you're not dependent on Facebook, it's just the tool that you're using. Let's say Facebook goes starts away. mildly mm -hmm. down and, and, and Snapchat becomes the next thing, everyone will follow you to Snapchat because they know you now. Right. See, the way you're doing it now they don't know necessarily you like that. Right. They're not following you. They're just, you're hitting them with an ad that seems interesting. You get what I'm saying? So this really reinforces <laughs> the sales process pretty much. Oh, this it's makes like your sales process, your sales process so easy and, and, and to do it right, if you shoot the videos in your in your actual studio, like right where people would walk in, let's say, let's say this is the lobby, right? So it's the door is right here, the front door is right here, and then this is it. You can literally say, hey, what's up? Or actually, I wouldn't even do that. You want to get to it very quick. So for, for YouTube <clears throat> and Facebook, you're going to have different strategies, right? Okay. So for YouTube, we'll get to that in a second. For Facebook, you want to get right to what you're going to help them with because you got about three seconds on YouTube, or on Facebook. Okay. So you're going to say... Because people are just like scrolling Yeah, through. you're scrolling through, and then, and then you want to have it captioned, right, so they can read it. Uh, believe it or not, in some cases, we've learned that more than 80% of our videos are actually watched on mute. And on Facebook, you can go to the insights, and it'll show you how many of your, what percentage of, this, of the people that watch this video have watched it on mute. Okay, because cool. people are in bed, their spouse is sleeping right. next to them, they don't want to wake them up, they're at the, they're at the office, yeah. you know, they're in an elevator, they're, they're taking, working a dump, out. taking a dump, <laughs> like you don't know what they're doing, right? They got the guy next to them in the stall, they don't want to like, they just read it. Um, but you know, the, 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 the goal is to get people to really watch it. So I would kick off with, you've probably heard that it's terrible to eat right before you go to bed. And you'll be surprised to know that it isn't if you do it this way. I'm Oscar with IMX Pilates, and I'm going to show you something that you probably didn't believe, so follow me. And then you just go into, like, the whiteboard, maybe, like, fast frame. Just go, you've probably heard that there's good carbs and bad carbs, but you like carbs, period. So let's talk about which carbs are okay to have at a point, and which ones you should just totally avoid as much as you possibly can. So, number one, these are the ones that are good, and I'm going to label the bad ones. So you go through that. Same thing. You've probably heard there's a big difference between good fats and bad fats. And good fats are actually necessary. We're gonna talk about which ones those are, and we're gonna talk about which ones the bad fats are so you can know to avoid them. Let's talk about the good fats. You probably hear a ton of people telling you about supplements and what you should actually have. And of course the internet's gonna tell you something totally different because they gotta make sales. Let me tell you about the supplements you definitely need to get into your body every day because food unfortunately doesn't have enough in it and if you want to get great results in the gym and you're putting yourself through a lot of stress in the gym, these are the ones you're going to need. Number one, I mean, I go for days. Yeah, right. The easiest way is what, what do your customers ask you every day? Right. And, and, and a lot Which of people have going to be that. And, yeah. Uh, what and, do I eat? What should I When pay? do I stretch? Yeah. Should I stretch before I work out, after I work out? Should I stretch in the morning? What should I have for breakfast? You know, should I do fast and cardio? Like you hear all of them, yeah. right? And, and here's the pushback I get from most people when I make that recommendation. They <clears> say, <throat> oh, but there's a ton of videos on that already. I get it, but why are they still asking you? Exactly. They're asking you because they don't get it. See, you see all those videos because for two reasons. Number one, because the internet shows you stuff that's relevant to what you're interested in, and you're a fitness person, so you're going to see every fitness thing that's probably ever made. Your customer 
is into cars, they're into movies, they're into reality TV, they're into their kids and what they're up to. They see a very different internet than you do. So don't think that your experience is their experience. They haven't seen a fraction of the health videos you think they have. And for number two, because you're into it, you notice it. If you just bought a Mercedes SL500, every time you drive, you see that car. Right. You, you see that car way more than I would because you have it. It's on the top of your head. And if you're always thinking about fitness and health, which you are because that's your life, you're going to catch every video that comes in front of you. You're going to see it. Whereas this person, they didn't even see it. It was there, but they didn't even see it. But they saw everything about Kim Kardashian, if that's what they're interested in. Right. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So there's two reasons why they're not seeing it. But when it's you and you're, you're actually targeted and they start seeing that familiarity, that same guy over and over, now they watch your videos. The cool thing is, here's the greatest thing. Once that person that watches, here, here's that person. Okay, they just saw you on their screen, right? And they just watched you. Cool. Here they are on day one, day two, they, watch, they saw you again. Now they see you at Whole Foods. They think you're, that's great, yeah. I gotta approach this guy. You're the guru right now. Now when they see you three, it's even cooler. There's a guy from Whole Foods, like he's a real person. Gosh. Now every video they watch, they don't not watch your video, they watch more of your videos now because you're like a real, like they met you. Right. You, you get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And you guys are missing out on that right now. You're just running ads, Definitely. which is what 99% of these small businesses are doing, and that's what's hurting you guys. And it's not hurting you. It's hurting right. what could be. Exactly. You guys it's are still just, doing great, right? Yeah, but, you know, we want to, like, push it to, you know, what else can we do? Right. And, uh, yeah, that we're definitely not doing this. And the way that you're explaining it, it's just, now I'm like, why are we not doing it? You're not doing it because you didn't really think about it. Right. Yeah. The same reason as everybody that sits down with you and goes, why am I not eating better? Right. Like it makes so much sense once somebody that understands how to explain it breaks it down. But when it's a big world and it seems like there's so many things, like they don't know what to start eating. Is organic healthy? Is it not healthy? Right? And in right. your world, same deal. So this is something that you should be focused on is building the brand. You should own your community. Own it. Where everybody else is like, there's no reason to open up here. Like, the, <laughs> like I can't even yeah. compete with these guys. Look how many videos they put up. Every day, they put something up, which is another point. Every day upload something to, to Facebook, um, to your page, video or image. We, it's clear, like with the hundreds of studios we work with now, it's clear, we, we see what the cost per lead is. We have spreadsheets that break it down. And um, uh, your competitor, just because we have a big one, I'm not gonna say their name, but your competitor, right? We work with like 70 or 80 of their locations. And so that's the same brand. And I just broke down three days ago. I noticed there's people that have $16 cost per leads and there's people that have two. And there's people that have $15 cost per lead, there's people that have five. The same brand, several locations in reach. What's the biggest variable? So I went to all their Facebook pages, and they're not doing what literally Facebook tells you they want you to do. The people that are paying $16, $15 a lead, maybe they're posting once every four or five days, and it's a low engagement post, like a motivational quote. I mean, it's just so boring. Just it, it's upload, stock, yeah. right? It's stock by the franchise. And then you got these people here, they're posting every day whether it's like a fun picture of the team, whether it's a before and after picture of a, of, a, of a member, whether it's a tip of the day, whether it's an announcement of an event they have coming up, whatever it is, right? They're posting every day, they're doing video. That's what Facebook wants. Facebook's made it very clear. They want video and live to be done more often. And if you're Facebook and you have me and somebody else and we both wanna run ads and real estate for ads and the newsfeed is scarce, I mean, everyone wants to run ads, not just you, right? You think this is the person you want to run ads to, right? This mom of three at 33 years old, right? right. You, want, you want her attention, right. right? Okay, you know who else wants her attention? Well, not just the other Pilates studio, but the dentist, the chiropractor, the daycare, the restaurant, the bar, the spa, the massage parlor. Like, like everyone wants, you're not the, fitness isn't the only game that wants the mom of three at 33 years old. Right? right? But there's only so many ads she's going to see. So how does Facebook choose who is going to get that opportunity? Well, it's simple. The people that are doing what Facebook wants, which is Facebook wants people to stay on their platform longer. Nothing keeps them on longer than video. And Facebook Live has an even longer average watch time. Because it's live. There's something about it. People stay on longer. 
So because you, a person that runs videos and lives in particular, keep people on Facebook longer, your Facebook, Facebook page actually gets a score. Like an SEO was called domain authority or page authority, right? Okay. In your case, you actually will get a score where now you are able to actually get better real estate to better people right. that fit the, everything a little better so that you can get a higher cost per, or a lower cost per lead. Gotcha. You see makes a lot of sense, yeah. So just post stuff, do all that stuff. <coughs> and don't. So that's, we should be doing that on a daily basis. Yes. Yes, and, and you shouldn't just be on Facebook. You need to be running stuff just like this on Instagram. Your cost is going to be about the same same platform. On YouTube, your cost is going to be even better on YouTube. Even better on YouTube. And once they see you out, and I say Whole Foods, but it could be anywhere, yeah. Walgreens. It, it could be at the park. It could be at a basketball game. It could be any like anything, right? Once they see you and then they see you back here on Facebook, on YouTube, and then, then they start following you're, you're dominating the space. People will stay with you longer because it's hard to leave because you like the association. There's something about saying, oh yeah, you know that guy that does all those videos? I actually work out of his gym. I go to that guy. It's a cool factor for me right. as a member to tell people when they say, oh yeah, this guy, he's always, oh yeah, that's, I go there. Yeah. But you take away my story if I leave. <laughs> right. So, so now attention. your attrition rate goes down too. Which is a huge problem in your space. Yeah. According to MindBody, with over 50,000 <laughs> studios using their software, okay, the average year, this was back in 2016, so the data should be the same, but they just didn't release data for last year yet. Um, but what they said was the average, average fitness studio retains people at a 10% retention rate. That means Super. if January 1st, or January 1st, you signed 100 people, 2016. By 2017, you would only have 10 of those original 100. Now, you may still have 110 members because you've signed up people, you kept refilling it, right. which is probably what you've noticed, right? You keep refilling, refilling, refilling. Yeah. So you still may have 110, but only 10 of those original 100 are there. And the best studios, the best of the best, are retaining at about 30% meaning 30 of the original 100 is still there. Now, a lot of people, everyone I talk to, literally every single studio I talk to that doesn't know their numbers well, that really doesn't measure that that way, they all say, oh, we're better than that. We must, we're killing it, we're better than that. Well, that's because you're thinking of the same 30 people. Like when you're thinking of the top of your head, you're thinking of those same 15, 20, 30 people, and we're talking about a year, so now you're thinking about people that have been with you for eight months, nine months, seven months, but go back and do your numbers for real and tell me that that's off. People need to do the numbers more and they'll understand that. So this helps with the attrition, okay. which is great, because that's important for sales, because outside of Facebook ads, what's your number one lead source? Just word of mouth. Word of mouth from who? From our clients. From your members, yeah. right? Cool thing is every time you get a new member, you also just added another one of your best lead sources, a new member, right? Thanks for watching. If you like this video, then subscribe to our YouTube channel where you can watch a ton more just like this. Thanks, and we'll see you in the next video.